Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a musician, writer, and producer who wrote his first song at the age of eight. By the time he was in the eighth grade, he was already being pursued by colleges for his music, musical ingenuity. He has shared the stage with and for some notable household names. I am happy to have him here with me today on the show. Let's welcome soul jazz saxophonist, Mr. Marcus Adams to the show. Aloha, Marcus, how are you? I am great, I am great. Thank you for having me, I'm happy to be here. I am so glad you are here with me. We just talked before coming on the air, um, the time difference. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's nine o'clock where you are? Yes, it's about, I am. So it's okay. nine o'clock p.m. It's, uh, it's my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I thank you so much for being here um, with me today. Now, let's just jump right on into this. Right. How did you get started into music? Well, I have a musical family, first and foremost. Um, um, dad sings. Mom sings. I'm the eldest of six siblings. We all sing and play different instruments. But I got started me personally um, by writing music. Um, I started writing songs at the early age of eight years old. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of got involved in music. I started writing songs, music, you know, or should I say songs by the, by the age, at the age of eight. That's how I kind of jumped into things. Wow. And then, um, as I said in the opening, by the time you were in the eighth grade, colleges are pursuing you? You know, I am originally um, from Greenwood, Mississippi. So mm -hmm. in the South, bands are a huge thing. You know, the, <laughs> yes. if you go to any of the HBCUs, the bands yes. are really big. So um it was the cool thing. Yeah, that's a picture of me that, that actually I was in band right there in Mississippi. And um, um, if you if you know anything about the bands, they're huge. And so I was big in the band. And uh, I remember vividly in the eighth grade, uh, Mississippi Valley State University, the band director came to my school, heard me play. And he said to me, young man, all you have to do is graduate. There is a scholarship waiting for you when you graduate. That is so true about down south in the bands, because um, I don't know if you know, but I went to an HBCU. I went to Hampton University and I was wow. in the band. I was in the band at Hampton University. And it's real. It's really big. It's a big it's, thing. The marching bands are really big. Yes. Down south. Yep. Yeah, the pep rallies, the, yes. the, 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 the homecoming games. Yes. You know, the, the, the bands are huge, you know, so that's how now, I got started. Now, how many instruments do you play? Because you are a multi-instrumentalist. I am. Um, I can play vividly three instruments. I can tinker with about four or five, but uh, I can play vividly three instruments. Um, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of the music that you hear on my CD, that's mm -hmm. all me. That's all me um, playing everything, you know, from the piano to the strings to arrangement. That's that's all me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, what's your favorite genre of music of pl to play? I know it's um, jazz, but what other genres do you like to play? You know, I am a big uh for um lack of words i would say um of course gospel i, I love mm -hmm. gospel i mean like gospel music and, and, and to be honest with you the older or more traditional the gospel music is it is more favorable to me like i am like like the gospel old time quartets or uh -huh. stuff like that and the reason why is because there were no, I mean, we're talking analog, you know what I mean? Uh, two track, reel to reel type of music. And mm -hmm. those guys and ladies could really sing. And so I'm a fan of, of very organic music, whatever it is. I'm a fan of just music that really showcases um, the, the depth of talent of a person. Nice. Now, 
people, some people may not know this, but you are a math teacher. Yes, right? Yes. Now, my question for you with this is because you're you're a musician and you're a math teacher. So how mm -hmm. does that work? Do you ever, do your students ever like they see you out or they see you performing or they see you in a festival, like, that's my teacher. Do they ever do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, um, a number of the students follow me on social media. Mm -hmm. um, um, they, they, I have uh, uh, played at the school uh, a number of times that I teach at. And so the students are very aware of what I do uh, outside of school. And they're very supportive. I mean, it's like, you know, um, they still treat me like Mr. Adams, the math teacher, mm -hmm. but they are they are aware of uh, what I do on other stages. Yeah. yeah. And they, they think and they think it's cool. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I think it's cool. I think it's cool <laughs> as well. Now, growing up again, who were your who were your your musical influences growing up? So I'll say probably um, the first time I heard uh, Chicago song by mm. David Sam by David Sanborn, mm -hmm. my life changed. Um, that was probably uh, my my introduction to jazz. Uh, but the baptism was Chick Corea. Electric band, mm -hmm. Light Years, that that CD. Yeah, man, th there were so many things going on musically inside of me when I first heard Light Years that I couldn't even comprehend all of what I was hearing. There were so many things going on. You have to think about it. I was baptized into jazz by Chick Corea. Come on, no. now. I mean, like, <laughs> like I went from zero to the moon. You know what I mean? And so. Right. Yeah, so I would say probably saxophone, definitely mm -hmm. David, Sa David Sanborn, uh, but uh, just into contemporary jazz as a whole, Chick Corea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now um, we're going to get into what have you been doing uh, during this pandemic? Of course, things are opening up now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what were you doing? during the pandemic when things were closed down, festivals were, were shut down, you couldn't perform. What were you doing? Well, you know, I was doing what um, the majority of my uh, colleagues and peers, uh, you know, they were doing. Uh, first and foremost, I was uh, trying to uh, stay upbeat, um, be optimistic about the uh, industry and the genre, number one, um, because there was so much going on. and. Um, after a pandemic or something of this nature, uh, we, we know things will never be the same. And so I was trying to remain upbeat. And then also, um, you, you, I was trying to find ways to stay connected to uh, my fan base and mm -hmm. those who supported me. So I started doing, as everyone else, uh, a lot of uh, lives, virtual performances. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, I am uh, pretty uh savvy when it comes to computers so i was able to make that transition you know just like i mean no problem whatsoever um and then um i also wrote two cds mm -hmm. during uh the pandemic uh one of them was love letters and the other one i just released was reset okay those are these are those are the two uh pandemic cds love letters that's on the screen now and then uh reset Reset. Yes. And I love, you know, I love your love letters, you know, as also I do radio and, and I tell you all the time, I, I just love, I, I just love that. I just love that CD. And it's yeah. just songs that I play all the time and now I'm starting to play Reset. But we're going to come back to that. So we're okay. in the pandemic. Okay. And I know that you are an advocate for mental health. Yes, and I, I know, and in this pandemic, a lot of people were having mental health issues, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. tell us about that. Well, well, Love Letters was, was partly inspired uh, by that. You know, um, you had people who were, for lack of words, and in a very real, real way, uh, um, confined and boundaries were set to where they had to be in particular places if they wanted to or not, 
Now, um, imagine if these people suffered with anxiety. Imagine mm -hmm. if these people suffered with um, any type of um, mental health and, uh, uh, um, issues or even abuse from a spouse or just abuse from a guardian, whatever, you know, um, they're, 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 I can imagine that mental health issues were probably magnified mm -hmm. during this time. And so part of Love Letters was inspired um, by people who may uh, be going through things. The song Superman, you know, if you listen to the lyrics, baby, what mm -hmm. is this? I see something unfamiliar. I don't recognize the sadness in your eyes. What happened, baby, to the smile that I remember, to the lady that was set my heart on fire? You know, just songs that were motivating and uh, just kind of addressing sadness and things like that that could yes. be going on in a person's life. Yeah. yeah wow. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, um, people, as you said, as, as, I, as I stated earlier, gigs and stuff, festivals are opening back up. Have you started playing gigs again? I have. I have. Um, I uh, have done a couple of gigs. Um, there are quite a few of them that are informative uh, stages, but um, I am uh, fortunate. And that, that's a recent gig that I was just at and uh, happened to catch me at a candid moment. Um, I was, <laughs> I was uh, singing during this time in a perfect uh, picture. But uh, I, I love the stage. I love performing. I love the energy. I love um, the spontaneity that's required to mm. um, to to be a uh, a performer that connects. And so, thank God, I am starting to get booked again. I'm very fortunate. Yeah. How did it feel to be back on the when you first stepped foot on that stage, getting back in front of a crowd? How did that feel? Well. Being very transparent, um, <laughs> you, you, you got to build back up. You, you got to build back up to it. I mean, virtual performance is nothing like live performance. Now, I'm 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 not saying that you know you you forget your chops or you you this or that. But th there's a, for instance, if you were a professional athlete and you you stop playing for a while, the muscle memory may be there, but you've got to get your rhythm back for mm -hmm. lack of words. And um, probably halfway through my first performance, I, I, I found my rhythm. Okay. You know, and, and it got real smooth after that. Yeah, okay. these, are pictures, these are pictures of me, you know, at uh, previous performances, uh, singing and playing the sax. And yeah, I think I, I really do believe that um, one of the uh, gifts that I'm fortunate to have is the ability to connect. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what makes a a um, artist. Uh, I think that's the defining characteristics that make that makes an artist um, a great entertainer as well. You know, if you can connect and make people a part of the moment, and I I, I feel I have an uncanny um, way of doing that. Now you call yourself, you know, I, you, you know, we say smooth jazz and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but you call yourself a soul jazz artist. I do. What is the difference? You know, and this, this is going to be a two part question for you. Okay. okay. So, right. what is the difference between the soul jazz and smooth jazz? And then mm -hmm. also, this is the second part to the question is what sets your sound apart from all the other saxophones? Okay. Uh, first part of that question what's the difference between soul jazz and smooth jazz? Mm -hmm. um, I, and this is just my personal perspective. I believe that soul jazz, I mean, or smooth jazz is a bit more pop influenced, mm -hmm. where soul jazz is heavily R&B influenced, R&B and gospel influenced, heavily R&B and gospel influenced. So if you listen to my music, my music is heavily R&B gospel and soul influence that's what it is and so where smooth jazz may be more pop mm -hmm. you know? um and um what sets me apart but what, what do i feel uh i wouldn't even say sets me apart what do i feel are my unique uh characteristics mm -hmm. um i believe number one the fact that one of my um 
saxophone idols is uh, Walter Beasley. Okay. And uh, he does something that I believe that a lot of saxophonists or a lot of uh, musicians can't do, especially saxophonists, and that's play and sing very well. You know, he can do both of them. Some, some, some musicians sing just to break up the monotony. But then there's some when you start to sing, you're like, wow, he can really sing. And I think that's one of the uh, qualities that, I, um, that sets me apart. Uh, honestly speaking, I could probably do half my show saxophone and the other half piano and vocals. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, could, I, could, I could seriously do that. If, if I, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start as I'm touring. Um, put I'm going to put inside of my show a James Ingram tribute, Ooh. and uh, that a part of that tribute is going to be me sitting down at the piano playing and singing some of his songs. Nice. Before we get to the video clip um, that I want to show of you playing, mm -hmm. let's talk about reset. What was the inspiration before be, behind the title of your CD reset? Well, I, I, I um, coming out of the pandemic, there um, I believe there's so many people, the world, not just the United States, not just my um, particular circle, but I believe the world has had the awesome um, chance or opportunity to reset. There's so many things, you know, even if it's just perspective. So mm -hmm. many people have, we've lost so many people. We've lost so many loved ones. We've lost so many people. And so just reset your perspective on life. Reset your perspective on dreams. Reset your perspective on love. Man, let's reset. Push the reset button. And let's, let's, let's live again. No one knew a pandemic was coming. Mm -hmm. No one knew that we'd have this in our lifetime. But we're here. It has happened. And now we're coming out. Let's reset. Let's, let's, love, let's love anew. Let's dream again. Let's, let's, let's go after things like never before. Let's reset, man. I feel like I'm in church. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm in the church. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Do you want to set up the, um, the video that you sent to me that we're going to show to our, to our um, audience today? Sure. Um, I believe this is uh, the video of me. Is it of me singing uh, Ain't No Sunshine? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. one of one of my um, I, I, like I said, I love the, the the guys and the artists that were of yesteryear that sing mm -hmm. for real. So um, Bill Withers is one of my uh, favorite vocal artists, and so I kind of took his song "Ain't No Sunshine" and uh, put a Marcus Adams soul jazz spin to it. So this is what you have. Let's listen to Marcus Adams' version of "Ain't No Sunshine." Thank you. 
my baby's gone away. I said, there ain't no sunshine when you're gone, baby. When you're gone and my house is not a home, anytime you go away. There ain't no sunshine when you're gone. It's not good when my baby's gone away. I said there ain't no sunshine when you go, baby. And my house is not a home anytime that you go away. I said there ain't no sunshine when you go, baby. It's not good, it's not good when you go away. And my house is not a home when my baby's gone, gone away. Let's go, Kiki. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Do you know? I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I said there ain't no sunshine. How was that? That was, I wish I could have heard the whole thing, but we just had to give the people just a little bit of snippet, you know, a snippet of what you do. Right. Now, you have collaborated with, with, with a few people, right? Yes, a lot of artists. Yes. Who would be your dream collaboration? You know, I keep saying this, and uh, this probably is going to be so left field. But I would love to do something woman, if it's a woman, with Layla Hathaway. Oh. If it's, and if it's a man, with uh, Michael McDonald. Ah, nice. Uh, nice. And I can see you do it. Like, like I tell all the artists when I ask that question, speak it into existence. Yes. Speak it. Now, I, I would probably say I'm closer to the Layla circle right now than I am uh -huh. And I am the Michael McDonald circle, but who knows? So what advice would you give new artists coming into the industry today? Um, well, you know, with the limited uh, um, success that I've had, I consider myself as a new artist too, but I'll just say the things that I have done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just talking basically the uh, smooth jazz genre. Mm -hmm. um, relationships. Relationships. Uh, the smooth jazz genre is a family. Mm -hmm. If you if you are out there working, and what I mean about and what I mean about working is if you're putting out music, if you're on the charts, if you're doing the festival circuit, if you're out there working, people see you, they hear you, they know who you are, and one phone call can. I case in point. Alexander Zanjic, Alexander Zanjic, flute player, legendary flute player. He does a couple of huge festivals a year. Mm -hmm. He wanted somebody, he was doing one in Michigan, and he wanted to get the Milwaukee crowd. He didn't know who to contact. Mm -hmm. Lynn Roundtree yeah. told him, there's, there's a saxophonist in Milwaukee who's making waves. He can get the Milwaukee crowd. His name is Marcus Adams. Alexander Zajic called me and I was on a show with Dave Cos and Kenny Lattimore because of relationships. Wow. See all that collaboration and all that networking and stuff in the music industry? Yes. So I, I would it. say definitely build strong relationships in the smooth jazz and uh, genre. Build strong relationships because your relationships are definitely going to be needed in this genre. Yeah. Now, for the saxophonists out there, saxophone players out there, what brand of saxophone do you instrument do you prefer? Or well, you uh, a lot of people don't know this, and I, I'm trying to promote this a little bit more because I, I'm just I'm just not accustomed to it. But I am an endorsed artist. Um, I am endorsed by Sax Dakota, mm -hmm. so I have label mates: uh, Paula Atherton. Um, um, Tony X Jr. Mm -hmm. All of these people are my label mates, or should I not label me, but my uh, endorsee mates. And so we're all endorsed. And um, yeah, I use uh, 
sax Dakota saxophones, primarily soprano and alto. Nice, nice. Now, what new projects are you working on? And are there any shows or virtual shows coming up that we should be marking our calendars for? Yep. I, um, <laughs> this, and I've, I've got to say this. Um, <laughs> I reached out to one of my uh, just dream collaborations, maybe uh, first part of the pandemic. And, you know, hey, can we do this and do that? And there was an initial response, but it was just kind of after that, just, you know, nothing. And it, it didn't stop me. I was like, okay, well, maybe it isn't, it isn't meant to happen now. Um, about, I want to say a month ago, out of the blue, um, this guy, um, it is, and it's uh, Walter Beasley. He just oh. reached out and said, hey, man, uh, you still want to do that tune? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I was like, whoa, I just put Reset out. And he said to me, okay, well, I still got to keep pushing, so just let me know. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, you don't put Walter Beasley on the back burner. Right. When he calls, you make something happen. I don't care if you're going to put it out <laughs> next year. You record with him when he calls. And so we are currently, he and I, we're working on the tune right now. And it's going to come out. And I think it's going to be fabulous. Uh, that's something that I'm doing studio-wise. Uh, Touring-wise, there's a huge potential that uh, has uh, fallen in my lap. And I can't just speak on it right now. Right, uh, right. Not, it's not solidified. And I just want to make sure that before I do that, um, it's solidified. But I'll just say this. You know, when this comes, uh, when this happens to me, it definitely will take my career to the next level. I'll say oh, I can't wait. Well, I'll be watching. You know, I will be watching. I have yes. just one minute left and I have one more um, question to ask you. And that okay. is where can people go to find your music? Where can they go to more, know more about you? My music is all over social media. Um, I mean, you know, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon. Just look up Marcus Adams if you want to know. If you have a particular project you like, Reset, Suddenly, um, Dream Again, in Love Letters, whatever. And then also you can go to my website, and that is themarcusadamsmusic.com. Yeah. You hear awesome. that, everybody? You yeah. hear that? TheMarcusAdams.com. The Mar the Marcus Adams Music. TheMarcusAdamsMusic.com. There you, you go. Need to go ahead and look him up, get his music, get his love letters, get all the music. Love letters, my favorite love letters. I'm still listening to Reset, but love letters, Reset, get it all. Get it all. And then find out where he's playing and go see him play. Marcus, I thank you so much for being here with me today. We'll have to call, we'll have to bring you back again. Um, yes, once, yeah, later on, once we set, you know, start starts getting out there more, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and bring you back. And maybe you may get a chance to come to Hawaii, who knows, we'll see. That would be a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you again, Marcus, so much for thank being you. here. To thank my you. viewers, thank you as well for being here. Hope you enjoyed the show. And I'll see you in a few weeks. Aloha and God. Bye-bye.